Hi, how you doing? I'm Callum for XBLG and this is my friend Scott. Scotty at Edo Games on Twitter if you want to follow me. And we are going to be talking about our four day massive adventure that was EGX 2015 in Birmingham. It was an adventure as well. It was a massive adventure. Massive, yeah, it was a sore feet adventure but an adventure all the same. Yeah, if you carried your Nintendo DS roundabout with you, you would have clocked up many, many coins for every hundred steps you've done. And probably lost weight. Yes. Unless you were drinking all the free tornado that was given out. Tornado! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're going to just going to do a quick kind of maybe five, ten minute round up of every day. What we kind of fitted in. I found there's so much room in the camera. I know, but come on, <laughs> you know, five, ten minutes doesn't really cover what we've seen in four days. No, it doesn't. Uh, so we started off first day really tired after the drive down. So we just kind of started off taking a wander about, maybe a bad idea, it could have been better to use that time, maybe going and standing in some of the bigger queues, but we started off by kind of looking at some indie games, we moved on to, headed down into the 18 plus area, checked out Homefront the Revolution, that was like the first game we kind of checked out. Yeah, it was a yeah, kind of first big one, we, we, we hovered around for quite a while looking at everything, but it was that way, it was like, you were looking at everything, you seen things you liked, but you weren't sure exactly what you were going to do first. It was like, well, I'm not sure what to do first, but we went for Home Front of the Revolution, which was, it was a good game, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, a, it was very good. It was, I had never played the first game, so my expectations of it were not very high. Well, I had played Home Front the original, and uh, Apart from the absolutely dismal multiplayer, I thought the campaign and it was good, but it was far too short and really quite fenced in. So you never felt like you were part of a, <coughs> excuse me, a revolution. You were part of, you know, a, a bunch of guys that got some weapons and shot some people. It wasn't didn't really have the the feel, uh, you oh, know. So, so, explain that like it sounds a bit generic FPS game, but yeah, well it was in a <laughs> sense, but at the time, you know, it was quite good. It was different, but short. The new one, the Home Front, the Revolution. Some things that were different in it, or sorry, not different. Some things that I wasn't expecting was your weapon customization. The fact that you could run about with an assault rifle, and you would just remove the barrels. You would just clip the barrel off, and you could change it to a grenade launcher. So you could walk up, take out large groups of enemies or armored vehicles just by switching the barrel of your gun, and you could switch it back to assault rifle. I played around with the RC car, which was basically. A Molotov cocktail or an incendiary device attached to a car that you could drive the car about and detonate it anywhere. Just a bit an interesting mechanic. Uh, I'm pretty sure Deep Silver have said though that the weapon customization is is going to go much deeper than that, and you will be able to change out stocks, scopes. That was all cartridges, part of the customization uh, options. Everything really, and the gun on the fly, so you'll not, you know, it's not a case of oh we're going to have to go through perpetual menus to change your gun, your gun. Customization, yeah, which is strange because most games, it's you know, you spend half an hour on the menu changing your gun customization to kill one guy, you know, <laughs> then yeah. you go, ah, wasted time. From after Homefront, we kind of moved back. We looked at some really good indie games. We played some, some that are available or going to be available on Xbox. You played Raging Justice. Oh, Raging Justice, that's a Streets of Rage. It's an homage <laughs> no, to no, the. No, it's a, it's a, it's a. It's a, it's a, it's a it's basically like every old game you can imagine it was a side scroll and beat em up. It's just like rolled into this game with some awesome, awesome graphics put in there that are, you know, kept kept true to the retro but they're just so good. You know It's it's a love letter to Double Dragon, Streets yeah. of Rage, those kind of games. But it was it was it was just great. I, I mean there was not really any I mean, I I couldn't say it was groundbreaking in any particular way, but it just felt awesome to get back into that whole side scrolling combat that was hard, there was, was a level of difficulty, you couldn't just mash buttons through it because the enemy would just floor you and one hit if you did that because there's no block, although there probably was because I have, I have a tendency not to look at the controls in these things. <laughs> uh, there was another game that I played called Mousecraft, now this is from a some really really small studio, it was all about a crazy cat scientist uh, called Schrodinger, and you know, it was it's almost like lemmings. You had to get your three mice, 
through the, the maze, but you could use blocks to create pathways, and then later on you would have to pick up bomb. You could get the mice to pick up bombs to get to the cheese, uh, to blow up parts so they could get to the cheese, which is the end of every maze. Then even later on, there's little water puzzles, there's acid puzzles, there's uh, robotic rats that stop you getting in your way. It was fantastic. It's deceptive because it looks so childish in its uh, graphical user interface that you can be deceived in thinking that it's easy. Because that the later levels, I was just looking really confused trying to figure out how you'd even get to the end of the level without having to pick up any of the extra pickups and. It's one of these games where there is little crystals along the map as well, but they're usually in a more obscure location, so you've got to not just get to the end of the level, but you have to figure out how to get the extra pickups as well. So it's Lemmings Tetris? Yes, it's Lemmings Tetris. That, is the, that was the tagline that pulled me in to play the game. Sounds sounds, a, sounds an interesting title, but then again, I mean, most of the end of the titles, well, just, you look at them, you're like, that's crazy, you sit down to them in this little hall. <laughs> Or the Shadow Hand. Well, Shadow Hand solitaire. was probably the it was the most outstanding, simple, memorable, easily missed game at the indie section. Run by the devs who are a wonderful couple, you know, and, and you know the it, it was the strangest thing ever. We just we just there was these two empty seats and these two devs just kinda eagerly waiting somebody to play their game and there, was, just... there was two devs standing there dressed as oh, highwaymen yeah. and, and or pirates or uh, however you want to look at it. And we just what they were like, Come play and we sat down and you know, forty five minutes passed <laughs> I believe and it was like it's, <laughs> it's just an exceptionally simple solitaire game with, with some, boss battles. With some awesome mechanics built in, some awesome the the, the system you have to you, you know Use the key to unlock an extra layer of cards, depending on what it is. Mahjong, it's yeah, it's kind of thing with cards. It's and solitaire meets mahjong. As much as it sounds really complicated. If there's a video, be, if there's a video on YouTube, I'll link it into the comments or the information below. It's difficult to describe, and easy to play, but it would probably take a real long time to master it. I mean, the boss battle system where you've got to build up a combo. To unlock your weapon to attack the boss, although you have to end your turn after you after you can't make any more moves, and then the computer gets or, to take or it. Or if you or if you launch your attack. Oh, you launch your attack, turn. yeah, end your turn, and then the computer then has to build up its oh. meter to attack. But you, so it's a bit like who will get the attack first. But, but you and the enemy both play off the same mahjong solitaire deck. Yeah, exactly. It's the same deck you're you're playing off at the time, and. What they showed us, which isn't actually incorporated yet into the game, is there's going to be an RPG style elements to the game where you pick up weapons for boss battles and items as you go. Customise your outfits. Yeah, along the way to your character to make them have better stats of defence, better weapons that do more damage, which was I thought was a really awesome thing to add because I mean how many solitaire games have you played that actually have mechanics? You know. I could I could sit here and talk about that, yeah. right, but I think it's more to kind of move down into what people might be wanting to hear the, yeah. the big AAA games. Let's talk about Halo Five <laughs> all night. No, I, I can I'll, I'll I'll talk about Halo Five for a little bit. Yeah, uh, Halo Five was really hard to get onto. There was always a three hour queue. If you stand in those kind of queues, you're not going to see a lot. So I got there early the Saturday morning, which was day three. I ashamed to admit I ran to the booth. Got onto the first 24, we were playing Warzone, so it's 12v12, so red team versus blue team as you would expect. There was an attrition kind of element where you had to capture zones within the level. So if you were part of blue team you had to capture neutral or enemy zones and then you would, once you captured all three, the enemy core would appear. If you destroy the enemy core, that's an that's element for an automatic win. But while you're fighting over these bases, there is AI, Covenant and Prometheans entering the level. Sometimes the kind of more elite or boss enemies uh, would appear and that uh, you would kind of focus because they can either come through and just plough through your team or they could uh, stop you getting to another area. The rec system in the game was that replaces your loadouts. So when you die, you can, instead of just selecting your preset loadout, you can actually use requisition points 
earned within the match. That unlocks uh, weapons, vehicles, all these kind of things. It can become a bit overpowering at some points if you are in the losing team and your enemies all have mantises or warthogs. It's very easy to get become overpowered. But you can actually swap this during the level as well. So if you feel you're getting pinned down in a location and the enemies are just around the corner, run back to your wreck station, grab a rocket launcher, run round, clear, clear a path for your team. You weren't overly impressed with Halo 5. I wasn't impressed with Halo 5 because Halo 5 is Halo for Halo fans. I mean, that sounds silly, but all it is is a Halo fans game. But, I mean, it wouldn't be... I wouldn't recommend it to anybody new to the series. I mean, it, ju it just felt like Halo with Battlefield mechanics to me. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks really good and it plays really well. I'm not going to... I'm not going to you know, credit where credit's due, but I'm not... Uh, just, to me... Also, I was in the losing team, which didn't help. <laughs> But uh, the 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 I, I did like that I did like the rec system I found I found that really good because it means it's less of this you know oh you know you might go in and go oh I've got a terrible loadout now I need to wait till I die to change it you can run up to a rec station if you don't get killed on route <laughs> but I did so or if you die die on route you can just respawn. yeah respawn but you go to the rec station you choose something new and you choose weapons. You choose any weapon really, but it's, it's an, because if you've unlocked it, of course, but you can't just choose anything to start with. That would make it really easy. Yes, uh, I'll have to say it does come in grades. Like the more high-powered weapons, like your fuel rod cannons, your sniper rifles, your rocket launchers, they're, they're the higher end. So the more kind of kills or bases captured within yeah. the level unlocks higher rank of yeah, tiers. It, it gives you a ver an audio indication that you've unlocked a new rec crank. Yeah, it seems to be as your team do better, you unlock better stuff as you go along, which makes sense in any game, of course. But uh, I, I mean, I, I like the fact that there's Covenant, you know, and other, you know, AI enemies about the level, as I learned the hard way as I was trying to kill somebody and a Covenant killed me. So it makes it an extra dynamic where you've got that, you know, AI threat on the map as well as, you know, human players to worry about that may be skilled at the game, far more skilled than myself. For instance, so obviously there's a lot of kind of hype build up about Halo Five because it's been quite a few years since Halo Four. Mm -hmm. But what about the other end of the FPS? What about the yearly iteration? You've got the new Call of Duty coming out, which we've got. Oh yeah, there's been a chance to play Call of Duty, and uh, I'm going to be completely honest here and say it's a copy and paste job from Activision and Electronic Arts as usual. I mean, it's the same game as the last one with wall running and a jetpack. I think they'll think there's a jetpack in it as well. I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, uh, the formula works for Call of Duty fans, so I'm sure they'll love it. It's it's kind of like exactly what you said about Halo, it's Call of Duty for Call of Duty fans. Yeah, exactly, I mean, like, like most AAA developers, I suppose there's like, you hear people saying, you know, they've found something that works and they're just going to keep doing it, and I can understand that. But with Call of Duty, it's different for Halo. Halo is what, five main iterations? You know, or six main iterations? Five iterations with Master Chief. And ODST, I believe, is a separate... ODST, it's your same first person shooter. Which I will know, I loved every other Halo, apart I've never played 4. Uh, no shame on me, but <laughs> yeah, but uh, with that Black Ops, it, it just it really felt like it was Titanfall with, you know. It was Titanfall, but not as good as Titanfall. Anybody that's played, the, well, not anybody, but there's a lot of people that played the beta, there was a lot of complaints about the Black Ops 3 beta when it was out, or beta, whatever you want to say. Uh, a lot of people didn't enjoy it. I know there was a lot of kind of controversy of it is a beta. It's not going to be the actual release. I wasn't impressed with it. I'm not a big Call of Duty fan. My kind of my first person shooters I enjoy to play are Titanfall, Halo. That's it. I'm, I'm sure there's another one in there somewhere. Uh, I, don't, I don't even mind Destiny that much. It's not brilliant. It's not the best. It's not the worst. Uh, it's. The map we were playing was too small. Obviously, I'm going to die a lot. I'm not. I'm not used to Call of Duties, and the people in the opposite team. I, I really dragged my team down. Not going to lie. Hold my hands up. I sucked at it. I, I was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I agree. I agree with what Callum said. The map was like you know a postage stamp. There really wasn't a lot of move room to move on it. And oh, the, it all the seemed, battle took room about the nose area. It, it seemed like one of the worst designed maps ever because clearly the only fighting that happened was right in the middle next to the jeep where one of the points were. It, it was. And I, it was I, two buildings like this. 
and you could run in this way or run in this way or come through the building, come through the building and that was it. It that was symmetrical. Led, yeah, it all led to the exact same location mm. and well that just felt for me, I understand you want a focal point for combat but I always liked in other games or co-op play where the map was wider and you would have small, smaller skirmishes with members of the teams in other areas like 2v2s happening in each part of the map but that would never happen in that map because everybody met in the middle so it was just whoever got in, got in and got off the shot first really. One of the strange things I did find about it is you get to pick a kind of, I don't know, it's, I suppose if you were playing Titanfall it would be your, your core ability for your Titan. It was, my character had a bow and arrow and you you pushed like two buttons to activate it when it came up on screen. The bow and arrow came out, I, that was the only time I really kind of started to get a good kill streak on the go, was because I, I camped. It was the only way I could find to use this bow and arrow with any effect. You just stood there, sniped with it, and that was it. It was just a really one hit kill snipe. So we've had an FPS that I've liked, you've not liked. We've had an FPS that we've both not liked, but there's an FPS we did both like. Oh, Rainbow Six, the yep. Siege. That Rainbow was, Six, the Siege. I actually came into EGX thinking I am not interested in another Rainbow Six game because I think they've never nailed the mechanics of the whole this is meant to be strategic first person shooter but with the siege the siege oh I, I mean the, I like the fact that one of the major things is if you're a defender in it and you've got you've got you've got like a target like a, I don't know what it was was it a bomb or you you, you had you, at the beginning of every round the team all voted on what room would oh, yeah. be the priority room to defend. That's obviously where your objective was going to be. I never actually found out what the objective was. I just knew uh, to I stop the enemies was, coming I into the I thought it was like a bomb or something. It was like you were almost like terrorists or a, you know, criminals of some sort. And you basically, the other, the other team had to get the objective. If they disarmed or get rid of the objective, they won. But I think it was the training level. So in the game, it would be... The game does have a like hostage situation, so that would be the room where you would hide the hostages kind of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but I really like the fact that the barricades, you could barricade up windows. You had a certain amount of barricades for each person, but you could barricade up windows, doors. And so you could create a focal point where the, their only entry could be through there, although they can destroy the barricades. but You have time at the beginning of every round where the defenders have a chance to barricade, defend, reinforce their fortification. And the attacking team can send in the drones, drones, uh, wee robot, or oh, sorry, little robot uh, cameras. Uh, I, th I thought my biggest thing was how's this little camera going to climb upstairs? Easy, you just go towards the stairs. Yeah, I know it's not going to die like fault. It's, it's computer game logic. Just this, like this little segway shaped thing just bumps upstairs. You can climb up onto the roof in the game and rappel off the roof. And, and spin swing. round. Yeah, spin round and shoot downwards. You can basically get full 360 from the, the rope and you can swing in through a window and, you know, hit somebody in the side of the head if you're the one to do, which I yeah. thought was a great mechanic, you know. There's not many games that you can rappel in that's a first person shooter. But it is very strategic. It's designed to be, you need to think about what you've got to do in it. It's not a case of, you know, let's run at the other team and shoot them and who gets, you know, the shot first. You've got to be You've got to work out a route to go in. You've got to try. If if we had the communication working in the headset, unfortunately, that's, that's what I was going working. to say. There was headsets set out. Uh, the way the booths were, there was a wall down the middle. One team was on the one uh, one side, other team on the other side. Both teams have all headsets. They should have been linked together. I could hear three members of the team, but they couldn't hear me. And Scott just had a. Headset, they yeah, could hear the game and that was it. I couldn't, I couldn't even, you know, heal a game tribute act, really, to be honest <laughs> with you. It was, the headset wasn't working, but that's that's not a problem because it, it's about the game. I mean, I think it's probably the best first-person shooter I've seen in a long time that's away from the likes of Halo and, you it's, know, It's the a other proper military series. kind of shooter. Yeah, it, it really is, and the, each it looks to me from the weapon loads out, loadouts and what I know from my own knowledge that the loadouts and the weapon set up for each of the various uh, forces in it are, mm -hmm. are we very accurate mm -hmm. and are, it's not like oh you can equip a, a M64 heavy machine gun on, on a, just a random character, every, every class has a specific role and I think once the game's out and it's on a bigger scale that'll play a pivotal part when deciding what you're going to do when you either you're attacking or defending each of these objectives. 
I'm sure there'll probably be a team deathmatch mode put in, but I'm not 100% in that. It could be the game's designed solely for cooperative play. What else? Across from... was Just Cause? Just Cause. Was Across, was it across from Siege? They decided to play that Just Cause. I know. That's right. Shameful. <laughs> shameful. So, Just Cause, we saw the queue. It was like, it's not that big a queue. Turns out, the big, the big queue was for the actual roaming, getting to explore the world demo. Or there was the tiny small queue, which was for the 90, 90 second destruction mode, which was a tournament they were running at EGX. You have unlimited rockets, 90 seconds for this when you first destroy something, and highest score at the end of the day wins, highest score at the end of the four days. Not only wins a copy of the game, but wins a, won a Sony... Sony's uh, home entertainment systems and a PS4. Still a, so I couldn't get yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, it's Just Cause. It's I've never played Just Cause, but it's more or less exactly how it looks. I didn't want to play the Rome, free roaming a Just Cause, even though it was a chance to play it before it's out. It's out December 1st, which isn't that far away, but it's what you're going to expect for Just Cause flashier graphics. I mean, it played really well, although it was, I think that bit we played was deliberately set up. It was an unstable beta kind of version set up for the tournament because... You couldn't go outside the kind of map area because I jumped yeah. out with the wingsuit mm -hmm. and flew to... I kind of tried to fly out towards a, which I thought was a petrol station and uh, it told me to go back and then after when I couldn't go back within the 10 seconds it restarted my... it restarted my challenge. The good thing was it was a 90 second challenge but you had about 15, 20 minutes on, yeah. so you had a series of 90 seconds to try yeah, and beat the... You keep plugging away at it until you work out... Because uh, uh, it's not exactly fair waiting in a queue to turn around and go, yeah, oh, 90 seconds. You, you've only got 90 seconds. I think that's probably why the tournament queue is so short though, because people were probably thinking, oh, mm -hmm. you only get 90 seconds in the game, what's the point in that? The introduction video though did show that the game's going to be 400 square miles in size, which means that that's about double the size of Just Cause 2 for all the fans out there, which means, and everybody knows, travelling and landing Just Cause 2 was impossible, it took too long, so flying looks like it'll still be the, the viable option in it. Eh, uh, it performed pretty well, similar controls, I think, I, I really, I should have probably played the open world version to get a chance to use the tensioning system with the multiple tethers, because... That would have been great, but unfortunately we never get time to do that. There was so much at EGX, so... Yeah. Just think about else. We played FIFA. That's all I have to say about that. Yes. Uh, we played Forza. And we played Forza. Forza, we played both the regular version and with the Elite controller. The new fancy Xbox Elite controller. Yeah, Forza's... Forza, once again, it's... Uh, we're not just doing this to full time it really is Forza, I mean I'd buy Project Cars if, personally because I feel that Project Cars has got a far more realistic look to it, a far more realistic feel. Forza without the, the likes of realistic handling and stuff on, <laughs> uh, still feels arcadey. You know, see if you put off traction control that still feels arcadey. I've, I've never been a fan of these kind of high end driving games, almost like driving simulators. Forza was I was I played the elite controller first. Very hard to end up not only playing a game on the elite controller that you'd never played before, but also trying to get used to the elite controller at the same time was just a lot to take in at once. So the next day I actually went and played Forza. The person who was leading me to my console to play it actually started up the game, so I never got to select my car track or anything. Did apologise for that, didn't really bother me, I didn't I would have picked anything. But it still has the the best line, best driving line mechanic. If you spin off, you have the reverse option, which is a, is interesting, yet you should only have a limited number because I felt like every I, I spun off maybe six or seven times within the whole three laps that I'd done of the track and I spun off in the very first corner of the very first lap, went from 6th place to 24th place and still finished first, all because anytime you spin off you have that option to just go back. Yeah, there's a, you're basically self-writing, so there's, you could essentially complete the entire game if you were not very good at racing games just by constantly using the reverse, 
I'm sure there's an option to put it off. I suppose it's the exact same thing. But you know, it's it's is it is what it is. One of the biggest games was Star Wars Battlefront. We it's not that we couldn't play it. We just refused to stand like, the three or four hours in the queue when there was so much still to see. We were there for four days. We still didn't see everything. Well, we saw it. We just didn't have a chance to play everything. Uh, it looked better than I was expecting it to be. But oh yeah, well, we did get a chance to stop by when somebody was watching. I uh, watched the full when you. I don't know whether you, I think you were at the Xbox stage at the time. I stood and watched the full clip. Like the PlayStation stage of the, you know, the thing, the kind of introduction video, mm -hmm. and yeah, it, do, it does look really good. It is really well presented looking. I couldn't hear because you've got a headset on yeah. it, but it looks really good, and it doesn't look as if it's just Battlefield retextured, which is a big surprise because, yeah, as a rule, <laughs> as a rule, have a tendency just to retexture their games. I mean, if anybody's played Battlefield Four and you're a fan and played Hardline, and you'll know that it was just retextured. I mean, don't get me wrong; it was different because it was police and cops and robbers kind of thing. But you know, Battlefronts get a much more feel. Of, this is Star Wars Battlefront. We just happen to be using Dice's Frostbite engine for it and Dice's excellent expertise at first-person shooters for it. So. I mean, the, fl the flying looks awesome. I mean, I hope mm -hmm. they do eventually add it on in space. It'll probably be an expensive DLC, but we we'll, we'll hope they do put the space flight in it because that, I think the dog fighting would be super. It's EA, they could release that for free, but then if you're, you'd have to do a microtransaction to buy the fuel for your fighting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. You can only fly for two minutes and then you have to pay 15 to to fly for another two minutes. Yeah, that's probably exactly how you will do it. But. Uh, no, it looked impressive. Never got a chance to play it. Do apologise, but it was. Uh, very, it wasn't very limited time, there was just a lot to see within the four days. Uh, same with Tomb Raider, massive queue, it was all behind closed doors, couldn't even get... It's 18 plus though, and it was mm. outside the 18 plus area, so I think that was why they had to booth it off due to mm. age restrictions. Uh, they still have those in games. One of the most standout games of the entire thing for both you and myself was Elite Dangerous. Oh, Elite Dangerous. The, the, out on the PC, coming out on Xbox One. The staff, the setup, everything was the way everybody else at that show, personally, apart from, of course, the indie developers, but all the Could have learned something from yeah, that team. Yeah, could have learned something from that team. They had a small shop selling merch and the copy of the game, and there was people at, that, at the shop itself constantly, you know, serving customers, but they would also get information if you needed it, and then there was a queues, one for... The Xbox on just a standard, you know, console setup, and then PC, which was the joystick and the throttle setup, and you could get a choice to go on both. And then there was a queue for the HTC Vive separate. There was staff constantly manning it, where you could go and you know ask for a shot at any, and they would tell you where to go, help you out. But anyway, on to the game itself. I mean, I, I, I had Elite Dangerous on my Steam wish list for a very, very long time. And because of the Steam price, I was like, I really don't want to buy this because I don't know anything about it. And Steam reviews are terrible. You played... We both had at least two shots yeah. on the, the main section. There was a queue for the HTC Vive, which is the Steam VR headset. They had one headset. It was an eight-minute demo. There was a massive queue. So we just decided... Play the PC and console version. It's the smaller yeah. queue. You're going to be on within one or two rounds of gameplay. Yeah, it was half and half. You went for the Xbox. I went for the Xbox of first. Of course, it didn't make sense. And I went for the PC. And I would have to say, I hope. And I was speaking to Callum about this earlier. I hope Microsoft bring out a joystick and throttle system for the Xbox. Not just for this game, but for more games than that. But honestly, the joystick and throttle system. Even without a VR headset, make the experience so much better. It's really easy to control the ship. It's easy to get used to the controls because it looks daunting when you, you see it at first. You're like, "Whoa, all oh, this, all oh, these buttons," but really, it's quite simplistic. It, the, the thing that confused me about the Xbox, the Xbox One version, is that right bumper is your throttle. Now, when you're playing with the PC, you have the throttle control, yeah. which would make more sense to use the Xbox. What, triggers because they vary with how much pressure you put on, more like what the throttle system would be. So if you push down full throttle you could let it go to half. Uh, Which is the actual controls for the game when I played it earlier on. So it is, On the PC? Yeah, it is, <laughs> it is the actual controls. I bought a copy of the game because it is fantastic. But 
Uh, just as the controls are right bump, for full thro to throttle up and down and left bump to... Bump or trigger? Right, right bump to throttle up, left that's, bump that's to throttle down. That's what it was. I'm saying yeah. it hasn't changed, that is the set stat. You can change it in the menu though, it does. You can remap all the controls in the controller for the menu and they are Xbox compatible. Right now, because I use an Xbox controller mm -hmm. with the PC though, I'm buying the joystick and throttle set up. Uh, how, how was it on the HTC Vive? Oh well, I managed to play it in the HTC Vive, which was Vive, uh, uh, which was lucky. Uh, and let's just say it is an amazing experience. It is nothing of what I expected. I expected some sort of thing you'd have to do to make it an experience, but I just had a Turtle Beach headset, which they were shamelessly plugging the whole time there, oh, and, and uh, the HTC Vive, the man set it up for me. So you had the visual and the audio mm -hmm. immersion? And I was sitting, and, oh, and the way the chair was set up, it was I think it was a vibrating false feedback chair, where you obviously get your, your directional control and your yaw control. They were fixed to the, the seat? Fixed to the seat, and then you had your throttle control and your booster on this side, but in the headset, Everything I pressed or moved, it moved inside the cockpit, which was a really strange feeling. My arms were moving in the cockpit as I moved everything around, and I was like, whoa. Uh, there's not really much more... Oh, sorry, there is. Uh, there's two, you're, there's you're there's taking two? two big major oh. things here. That's a, nearly a massive blunder here for Cal. Sorry, I do apologise. Or did you I do this on purpose? Uh, remember, there's, there's several things. There's Ia, Ia Etar, I believe they pronounce it as, for start for the indie game section. Yeah. And there's a, we'll cover that detail there's a dev session as well for that. We yes, that, that's one of my, my faux pas, I believe. And uh, I, Right, we'll start off. Deus Ex Mankind Divided. There was no gameplay. It was a half hour presentation. That was the E3 trailer, or the E3 gameplay footage. It was spectacular. I've seen it before, but it's still spectacular. Yeah. At this point, we were running about tw 32 hours without sleep. Mm, so, there are thereabouts. forgive us for not remembering every single detail. And we got in at the very tail end of the session, which means there was no seats. So we're standing for 25 minutes trying not to move. Doesn't help when you're very tired. Adam Jensen has a beard. Yes, that's what he remembers from no, the tail. No, 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 <laughs> seriously, no. Eh, <laughs> uh, well... Got to see the... Is it the Tesla Fist? Which is the new... Tesla Fist? Is that what it's called? I don't know. I just some, 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 <laughs> some pioneer of electronics and uh, a fist. Yeah, I remember so. Armblade, which was violent. <laughs> very violent. Awesome. You can pin people to wall, the walls with a blade that can fire off your arm, which was spectacular. The whole game can be played start to finish, including boss fights, without ever killing an enemy. Yeah, without essentially... No, Firing a single shot, as you might say. You you have non-lethal ways of taking down enemies. You have extremely lethal ways yeah, of taking down enemies. They've targeted extremes with it. You know, you can go from one extreme to the other if you wish. And the cover system returns, from what I can see. The, the, I'm, the, I'm I'm happy with that. The, I'm happy with that as well. I do like the fact that you can fight in third person and first person, mm -hmm. which was an awesome mechanic, I think, from Human Revolution. I mean, it was just. It's it's definitely I loved Human Revolution when I <laughs> I was one of the people that did ask for a, a sequel and I'm really happy. It looks spectacular. It's looking just every bit as good as Human Revolution. Coming from the, the gamers' point of view here, the, the it deserved a sequel after the ending to Human Revolution, in my opinion. That was know. that was such an anti. It was an anti <laughs> yeah, it was anticlimactic. Push a button to finish the game. Yeah, that kind of was like, oh, the, you're pushing a button to destroy the world, sort of thing. You know, mm -hmm. that was he was if well, you just dropped off a cliff. But so, yeah, you are Adam Jensen. You're back. You're working for a government agency. You believe you are being the government agency. Sorry, is uh, funded by the Illuminati. Adam wants to, he believes he's a kind of double agent, he wants to know more about who's pulling the strings of the world and how him as one man can combat that, or oh, sorry, one half man, half machine can combat that. It's more or less Deus Ex storyline, but if it's just more or less more Deus Ex, I'm totally happy with that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's what I can see. It's much, much more of the same, really, with some the same polished graphics, the same 
Same Adam Jensen, we all know and love, that can sneeze sunglasses now, <laughs> apparently. But, uh, no, I mean, it seems really good. The, the, the hacking system returns, I believe, which has made even harder, they said, <laughs> than it has before. That's for all you people out there that were screaming at the TV when you were doing the hacking system. You now have it even harder. But I think there's more mechanics going to be added to that, as far yes. as I said. Uh, extra abilities added for Mr. Jensen. Mm -hmm. uh, extra mm -hmm. weapons. The weapon customization can be done in the fly, I do believe. I believe we're talking about that. We did see that. Which which is awesome as well because we've seen that in Homefront and thought that was surprising. Now it's in Deus Ex as well. I mean, that's a game that you know we've already played and we know much about that we can do it in. So but it just seems to be expanded quite a bit. I wonder if the tornado. Remember the tornado system with the ball bearings. It wasn't, it wasn't the tornado. Was it not the typhoon? Typhoon. That was a typhoon attack system or something. It was called. I hope that returns. Because <laughs> you're, you're that getting was... mixed up with the energy drink. That yeah, the tornado. <laughs> But uh, I'm, I'm hoping that returns because that was pretty awesome. And uh, when you were really in a firefight, you, you'd over underestimate a firefight, and you could use that because I just found it fun to kill people with lots of ball bearings. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. spectacular game. Can't wait for it. It's going to be out next year. Looks awesome. Yes. Now going from a game that I loved previously and want more of, there was a game that I wasn't too bothered about. And yeah. Couldn't really care. Anything the, la about. the last game almost made it fall off a map in the sense is uh, I believe Hitman. Well, each to their own for that. Yeah, well, yeah, that is each to their own for that. But Hitman. Hitman, yes, Hitman from. What can you say about Hitman? After E three, I just could not be bothered. I, personal opinion, I'm not a massive Hitman fan. The earlier game, Silent Assassin, really did enjoy. Just it was. It was more just flogging dead horse to oh, steal your terminology. Yeah, Square Enix, Square, is it is Square Enix yes, that's yes, publishing it? They mm, seemed to yes. borrow the flogging whip off Ubisoft for a while and decided we were going to do the same thing over and over again. And the E3 trailer made it look bland. Now, I don't know if it was because the, develop, the developer presentation we went to see was a very special one. It actually had David Bateson the voice of Agent 47, that that was kind of more of a reason to go see that presentation. But when we sat in, it was like, okay, they've actually got a celebrity, this, kiss, this is kind of more appealing. It kind of makes it more interesting. But when they actually started to play the game, I did not realise how many ways you could interpret the level encounter, what you could bring into the level with you for attack-wise, what you can do on the fly, what death traps there is. The death traps are increased per square foot now. You can poison every single poor bastard on the map if you really want to to get to your target. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the amount of stuff they've added to it, I think they've probably looked at what people said about Absolution, which wasn't the best game, and said, you know, we really need to up our game in the next one. And, you know, from that, what we saw, I mean, the amount of, the amount of mechanics and and, and even just ways you can kill people, uh, they've added is in, insane. And also the size of the levels. I mean, we went for we went for tunneled, <laughs> tunneled levels basically to you know this large open, almost like a what would you call it a, a hub you're in. You, it, it, to, you, could, went, you could walk around doing nothing, just <laughs> scoping it out for hours. It's went from your postage stamp, yeah, postage stamp, to, stamp to, to, to the DSX hub system, which in, I mean from that. When we saw, which was in Paris, was it in Paris? Yes, it was a palace. Um, with a, 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 sorry, it was an art gallery. Art gallery. There was a fashion show on in Paris, mm -hmm. and they kind of showed you hey, when they showed you the gameplay at the developer conference. They switched to that free roam and camera mode. Where oh, that was around. a developer session, which was on the live stream. They they started off showing you the exact same thing we'd seen in the developer presentation previously, but. They walk, you walk in past the gates and then in the presentation they just went ahead and walked you through the level but in the developer session they actually put on like I suppose you would call it god mode kind of yeah, thing yeah and went to the free, the free camera you, you get to just move the camera about the map and they could go through walls your target was moving about the map the people were going out to like, check on the helicopter there was people Still scouting the area around about, security guards were everywhere. So, in rounding up, what was your highlight of EGX 2015? Well, I can give four titles. Four uh, pick, titles. pick one. Four, I can't pick no, one. You, not, not a title, what was your highlight of the show? Doesn't highlight? Hmm, that's interesting. I think for the show, ignoring the titles themselves, 
the setup of Elite Dangerous, his whole setup and their whole booth and everything was just so good. They were so welcoming, they were so helpful. I think that just that was excellent compared to other other mm -hmm. people that were there. That was enjoyable. The highlight for me has to be how much my opinion changed on Hitman. How I went from not even wanting it on my radar to actually really looking forward to it now. I'm not going to say it was what my game of the show, but it's definitely the highlight for me is how much my opinion changed on that game. So, would you so let's say we give four titles and we give two titles and I want to watch and a, maybe maybe a wild card? What would you say? Right. Uh, I'm going to start with the wild card. It's not an Xbox game, but it's, that's the Shadowhand. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say that as well. And excuse the pun there, a wild card's got to be Shadowhand, but I definitely say <laughs> Shadowhand is, is a wild card here because it was just, it was 45 minutes blinked away basically playing <laughs> that game. And it, even I loved the narrative in it. I mean, that, that was great. But so what would be your. Uh, well, games to watch. Obviously, you're. The one to watch for me is Home Front. Home Front. Uh, That's just the way I see it, want to watch out and see how it develops. It's one I didn't really speak about on video, but I had spoken, I had wrote about it on for EGX Res. I did love playing Gear Gauntlet again. Gear Gauntlet, can I just say the whole ID Xbox section? Yeah, you're allowed to do that. Okay, ID Xbox. It was technically a game, the way mm -hmm. Xbox was seeing it, so. Yes, it was lots of random selections, little games. So much fun that you can buy two or three indie games to the price of a triple A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good value yeah. for money. Uh, so obviously you're not just Xbox, you're PlayStation, you're PC, you're obviously fan. Any kind of more indie games or that you would like to kind of get your hands on? Oh no, no indie game. I, I don't know. E I T R. Or Eater. Eater. I'm not 100. percent I don't want to ruin it, but I think that's that's definitely something I'd like to get my hands on when it comes out in any platform that it's and, available on, really. And that's a very Souls-like Diablo yeah, crossover. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it was rather interesting to play in bonfires and everything with yes. a different lore, <laughs> but very difficult. I might the, add. The, the, the developers did say they, they love the show Vikings. Not seen it. Can't comment on it and they love Dark Souls, it looks like a good combination. Go check out the trailer. Yeah. Okay. So, main title then? For main title for the show for me? I'm in the spot here. Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, I've got to say the same, Rainbow. My, my, I'd probably say my, my two major titles would have been Rainbow Six Siege. And I'm going to say it, although a lot of people will be shocked, it's Halo 5, the two major titles for, Ooh. for EGX too. I almost forgot about that, shockingly. But uh, yeah, it's, they're both first person cooperative shooters, yeah, mm -hmm. but totally different mechanics, yes. highly different sets. Although, although it is, you're in a kind of deathmatch, you're in a 12v12, large number deathmatch in Halo, uh, it's going to have a campaign attached to it as well, campaigns becoming more and more intriguing by the day if you listen to the Hunt the Truth podcasts, the new trailer that dropped today featuring Master Chief's publicised death, I don't know if you've seen that yet, that's a minute long trailer, I've not spoiled anything. <laughs> so, any final thoughts, words, one day? Well, uh, probably just, you know, it was an excellent four days, it was a phenomenal four days, seen some really excellent, excellent AAA games, seen some really, really excellent Intuitive minds creating indie developments out there that are just useful. All the sorts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> indie developments that are just you know, to, to use a, a street pun, you know, or a street saying that they're off the chain. Really, I mean, some of the things you see for indies are incredible. It's, but it's a lot of maybe unrecognised minds and creative talents definitely are getting more chances to shine through in this medium. Yeah, and overall, I would say. After using the HTC Vive, I would say keep your eye on VR. All VR, not Oculus Rift, you know, PlayStation VR. 
if eventually Microsoft has an Xbox, well, if they come out with an Xbox alternative, well, keep your eye on VR as a whole because from what I played for the Vive, and I'm assuming that that's a pretty similar idea, that was that's something that could be a good thing in the future. A little price could be a bit costly. A lot of them are saying that console. The, uh -huh. it's, it's basically the price for another console on top of what you already own for the VR systems. But more on that at a later date. Uh, Thank you for being here Scott. No problem. Thank you for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, more great content from XBLG. Check me out in Scotty at Edo Gaming if you wish to follow me on Twitter. I'm setting up my own website soon so you'll hear more about that in the future as well. I am just at Citri, C-E-T-R-I-E. -E. Got my YouTube videos, a lot of articles for the site got from me. Thank you for watching. Thanks.